morning and welcome. We are gathered in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And today is like a birthday celebration in the church. We celebrate, in fact, the birthday of the church. Today we celebrate the giving of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost um, that brought about the beginnings of the Christian church. In worship, we get to pour out our hearts to God. We pour out our love for Him, but we're reminded that this begins with God who pours out His love for us. And so we, we begin listening or leaning in and hearing what God is speaking to us, hearing what God is saying to us that in fact inspires our response. In fact, hearing the testimony of the Holy Spirit who guides us into truth. In Paul's letter to the Romans, it says, For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The Spirit you received does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the Spirit you received brought about your adoption. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. So let me encourage you as we offer ourselves in worship, as we pour out our hearts, wherever you are, to listen to the witness, the testimony of the Spirit of God, who affirms that you are indeed a beloved child of God. Breathe on me, breath of God. All of heaven held 
held its breath till the stone was moved for good, for the Lamb had conquered death, and the dead rose from their tombs, and the angels stood in awe for the souls of all who had come till the Father. Gospel truth the bold shall not kneel, shall not faint. By his blood and in his name, in his freedom I am free. For the love of Jesus Christ, who has resurrected me. Yeah.
lift up your name to call on our Savior, to fall on your grace. Hear the joyful sound of our offering as your saints bow down, as your Counselor to be with you forever, the Spirit of Truth. Whoever has my commands and obeys them, he is the one who loves me. He who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love him and show myself to him. Because of God's great love for us, we can speak honestly and openly with him and with one another. We celebrate his love for us as we humble ourselves in confession. And this morning we'll pray a unison prayer together. Feel free to turn on your microphones as we pray together. Our God, we come in humility, confessing who and what we are. We are often unresponsive, for we are afraid. When your spirit speaks, we turn deaf ears, for we fear that you might call us to do. When your spirit touches our lips, we close our mouths, embarrassed to speak your word. When the wind of your spirit blows, we close the windows of our hearts, afraid the breeze will disrupt our ordered lives. When the fire of your spirit touches us, we quench the flame, afraid of the new life it might bring. Forgive us, Lord. Amen. In Ezekiel 36, we hear this good news as God speaks I will take you out of the nations. I will gather you from all the countries. I will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees. You will be my people and I will be your God. Listen to the testimony of the spirit. You are a beloved child of God. 
In Jesus Christ, you are reconciled to God and your sins are forgiven. Receive this gift, the gift of God's grace and his love and forgiveness. And also share it with those around you. And again, you're invited to open up your microphones as you greet one another and pass the peace of Christ. reciting one of the early formulas, the creeds. Uh, these were ways that the early church uh, encouraged each other in terms of how we understand our faith and what we believe, affirming the Father, the Son, and the Spirit 
the triune God who we trust. So let's, uh, let's affirm our faith together as we say the, Ni the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. And all God's people said, Amen. Well, good morning, everybody. Good to see everybody here today, especially some of our kids and youth. And uh, I'm excited. I have a little short little devotional thought for our kids and our young people and anybody young at heart. Is that anybody out there? Just raise your hand if that's you. Yes. Raise the roof. There you go. <laughs> so I wanted to ask you this question. Has anybody here ever dropped anything? Like, I just dropped my pen. It's Easy. It can kind of slip through your fingers, right? Kids, you ever drop something, a toy, something you're, you know, it just falls through your fingers. Well, I can think of one time I dropped something that mattered a little bit more than a pen. I remember I dropped one time my mother's favorite glass shade for her lamp. It was a hand-painted glass shade. You're asking, why was that in your hands as a kid? That part I can't remember. But what I do remember is I dropped it and it shattered into a thousand pieces and my mom was not too happy with me. So there's a lot of things that we can drop and that can kind of fall through our hands and through, fall through our fingers, whether it's a lampshade or a pen or even a toy. But there's something in the Bible that we're told to not drop and something that we're told to hold on to. And it's, uh, it's, it's very important. So Proverbs 4 verse 13 says this, hold on to instruction do not let it go. Guard it well, for it is your life. So God wants us to hold on to something. He wants us to hold on to his instruction. And his instruction, as we know, is the Bible, his word. Now, that might sound a little bit boring to us sometimes, instruction, I, holding on to that. Do I really want to hold on to instruction? Well, I want you to think about this. If we don't hold on to instruction, how would we know how to live? How would we know our direction? I mean, pretty much any toy you buy or anything from the store comes with instruction. It shows you how to use it. Well, it's the same thing with our Christian life. God has given us his instruction, the word, the Bible. And that's how we're to live our life. And God created us and has shown us the way to do that. But you know what? Many times we listen to other voices and other instructions and we let those things kind of crowd out the real instructions from God's word. And so keep in mind that God knows what's best for us. His instructions are best. God knows better than the other voices. He knows better, including our own voice, including our own feelings, including our own circumstances. He knows what's best for us. So what are we supposed to do with God's instructions? That verse had two simple thoughts. We're to not let it go. How do you not let go of something? How do you hold on to something like this pen? Well, you use it. You remember it. You keep it close to you. If I'm holding it, I'm not going to drop it if I'm using it. So don't let it go. Remember it and use it. And number two is to guard it. To don't let the other voices take it from us. Guard it. It's, pre it's precious. It's important. 
We hold on to things tight. If you're holding your iPad right now, you're not going to carry it loosely. You're going to hold on to it tight so it doesn't drop. And so it's the same thing with God's instructions. Let's hold on to that tight and let's use that. Let's pray together. And as we pray, maybe just do this. Not like you're going to punch somebody, but just as a symbol of holding on, let's put our hands together and hold on to it as we hold on to God's word. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for today, and thank you for your truth that we can hold on to. It. We thank you that your scripture is real and meaningful and instructions for us. And I thank you for each of our children and how they are being raised and learning to hold on to the truth at a young age. I'm so thankful for our kids and our youth and our young adults and all of us that we can hold on to, our, to your truth. Help us to do that. Help our children as they finish out this school year and this crazy time that it's been, that they would just do their best and they would finish out a, a great year together and learning. And I just pray for each of our families and the times we have together at home that they will be meaningful. And above all, help us to hold on to your truth. In Jesus' name, amen. This, the scripture portion for this morning's meditation is taken from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 21. Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 21. When the day of the Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment, because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, Aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and other parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, What does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, They've had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you and listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, thanks be to God. Uh, Joseph, thank you so much uh, for the scripture reading. Uh, Ken and Ben, thank you for all the technical assistance. Um, good morning, everybody. Uh, good to see all of you here. Um, as you uh, have read in my pastor's email, uh, we are a congregation, and a congregation is also a congregation that congregates, right? So it's a noun and a verb together, and we can't have one without the other. And I know today we had that to, to about 45 connections, and so that's the most we've ever had. We have people joining us uh, online with their device. We have somebody also joining us through the telephone, and so it's really easy to connect. So just uh, really thankful all of you are here, and uh, thankful for um, 
uh, everybody's just uh, help and uh, participation. And I'm thankful for God uh, that we have this technology that we're able to meet together. And so, friends, as we continue to hear for the word of God this morning, will you bow with me for a short prayer? The Spirit of God, at Pentecost, you moved among the gathered disciples to create new understanding. So move among us this day to fill us with a fresh understanding of the scriptures. Energize us to act on the holy wisdom faithfully. In the name of Jesus Christ, the living word. Amen. Well, uh, friends, I don't know what you have been watching during this uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, I'm sure some of you have been binge watching a lot of shows. Uh, but one of the things I enjoy watching uh, are actually dog rescues on YouTube. Uh, have any of you ever watched those uh, dog rescue videos? Um, yeah. The show always starts with somebody reporting a lost or an abandoned dog, and the rescue team then arrives at the scene. And uh, then they try to coax the dog. And uh, they try to win the dog's trust uh, by giving it food. Uh, and when they do win uh, the dog's trust, they take it to the vet uh, where the dog can be cleansed and treated for any illnesses or infections uh, they might have. Uh, most of the times, the dogs are flea infested, starving, and have health issues. And what I love about these episodes are seeing the transformation uh, that takes place in these dogs. Um, uh, these broken and scared dogs are given a second lease on life, and you can see the transformation taking place. Uh, they get washed healed and put up for adoption. And I find it very touching to see these dogs being rescued and being placed into loving homes where they are wanted. It got me thinking in many ways, these dog rescues, uh, it reminds me of Jesus's uh, ministry. You know, our Lord Jesus came for the lost. Jesus came for the broken. Jesus came for the ill. Jesus came for the hungry. Jesus came for the outcasts. Uh, Jesus came to restore. Uh, Jesus came so that we can all be given a second chance. Uh, Jesus came so that we can be washed, healed, and resort, uh, restored into his household. Uh, Jesus came so that we can be reborn. Uh, uh, Jesus came so that we can enjoy the life that God had intended uh, for his family. It doesn't matter how messy we are. Uh, it doesn't matter how far we've gone astray. Uh, it seems to me the Good Shepherd is willing to make his way for us. And uh, it seems like the farther the person is away, the farther or the more ill the dog is, I find these episodes and, uh, even more dramatic. And I find as we hear the testimonies of people, the more broken we are often, it seems the bigger the grace. But how many times was Jesus criticized for being friends of sinners? He hung out with the questionable, questionables of the society, and in turn, he was questioned. But I often wonder how great must have been there, uh, like the disciples, to have the front row seat, just seeing Jesus minister to the people in need. I know watching even these dog rescues moves my heart. How much more so? Would our hearts have been moved to see the compassion of our Lord ministering uh, to the broken people and their lives being transformed by his grace? Well, as many of you know, last week was our Ascension Sunday. We call it Ascension, and it sounds glorious, doesn't it? But imagine if you were the disciples that were immediately there. They saw their Lord crucified. They were bewildered. When they saw Jesus resurrected, they were bewildered. Jesus was uh, there with them. He would disappear. He would show up. He would teach them. And now ascension takes place again, and Jesus is taken away from their sight. It must have been uh, very unsettling. Have you ever wondered how the... Uh, they, uh, so it must be very unsettling. They looked up to their Lord who cared for them and others so deeply, and now he was gone. What were they to do? Well, they must have 
stayed in Jerusalem and constantly gather for prayer. Then after 10 days of, after ascension, 10 days of gathering in prayer, it happened. The Pentecost, the Spirit of God was poured upon the disciples of Jesus who were gathered for prayer. And did you catch that in the scripture today that the Pentecost took when? It took place in the morning. The scripture doesn't explain the significance of that, but I believe it happened in the morning because it was descriptive as well as symbolic that a new day was dawning. The night and the darkness of old and the sinful past is passing and a new day is dawning. God was pouring his spirit upon the people in Jerusalem to create something new. God was fulfilling his promises of old to begin something new. God pours his spirit on his people so that people may be rescued, renewed, and that they may become more like Jesus. A new dawn takes place uh, where we weren't waiting for someone like Jesus to keep ministering to us, but now we're given the spirit of Christ so that we can live and minister like Jesus. So friends, we're not waiting for Jesus to come and join us again, but the Holy Spirit has been poured out unto us until Jesus comes back. We are now to take his role and to live like Jesus lived amongst us and to be to one another how Jesus was to the disciples. And the Holy Spirit is there to lead us into that kind of new community. So point number one from scripture today, uh, we're told when that the Pentecost took place, that the people were filled with God's Spirit. Now, Pentecost is a glorious day in which God has ushered in a new season by pouring His Spirit on people. If people were anxious after the departure of Jesus, they do not need to be anxious anymore. Just like Jesus promised while He was with the 12 disciples, the Holy Spirit is now here with us so powerfully. We're told that on the day of Pentecost, when God broke into the upper prayer room, one of the first things that happened was that the disciples were filled with the Holy Spirit. Not just a tiny sprinkle, but God is a generous God. He filled the people with His Spirit. God's presence in each of the disciples was so richly abundant. Now, St. Augustine of Hippo writes, The Father and the Son have given the church no greater gift than the outpouring of God's own Spirit. God does not give a gift inferior to Himself. He Himself is our gift. God the Father and God the Son gave nothing short of themselves when the Holy Spirit was given uh, to us. God himself has become so powerfully present in the lives of all believers through the Holy Spirit. Friends, think of it like this. Do you remember the first time you fell in love? It, it was so hard not to think of that person. You know, you write their card or their letter over and over again. You wake up and you find yourself thinking about them. Before going to bed, you're thinking about them. You're at work, you're thinking about them. You... When you're about to get a paycheck, you wonder where you could go or what you can buy for the person that you love. When you love someone, their being becomes so present in your life that they fill your life so much, it's hard to escape them. You think about the people you love, and when they are present, as when, they, as when they're not present, you know, they're always there. It's hard to escape them, but in a good way. And in Pentecost, God has come to fill our lives with himself. Just as God was so apparent in the life of Jesus, the Spirit of God was so near and in Jesus that in the same way God is offering that to us. Now, the second thing that happened at Pentecost is that people spoke in other tongues. Of all the things that could have happened uh, with, uh, when people became filled with the Holy Spirit, what happened was that they spoke in other tongues. This in many ways is a defining mark of the church. The church of Jesus Christ is a church that speaks. Um, the church is a church that proclaims 
what the Holy Spirit would have us say. The church speaks other tongues so that other people can hear what the Holy Spirit would have them hear. And what is the message of the Holy Spirit? It's about Jesus, and in particular, it's about the gospel of Christ. The gospel is about salvation. People who are broken, people who are far away, people who are spiritually starving, people who are slaves to sin can be reborn in the gospel of Christ. People of all different ethnicities were able to hear good news proclaimed in their own language at Pentecost. Didn't Jesus tell the church to go and share the good news with all nations? Didn't Jesus call the church to be his witness to the ends of the earth? It's easy to become ethnocentric. It's easy, easy to gather with people who are just like us. But Pentecost uh, makes us remember that the good news is for all people. It's interesting to note that even as far back as Genesis, that this was God's desire. Here, the words from Genesis 12, when God blessed Abraham, God said to him, I will make you into a great nation. Uh, I, and I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. Did you catch that last part? That all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. All peoples on earth was blessed through Abraham, in particular, his seed, that is, Jesus Christ. Last point, when the Pentecost took place, uh, the Spirit enabled them. So from the creation of humanity, God has called us to participate in his kingdom. We were created to commune with God and to love one another. But it seems as we look into the history of humankind that we're not able to do this. Everywhere we look, people have failed to live up to the high standard in which we were created. I'm sure many of you are saddened by the brokenness of our world. Look at all the violence, injustice, crime, selfishness, bullying, indifference, domestic abuse, killing, wars, racism, cheating, and a much longer list is happening in our world. Every day you turn on the news and there's just brokenness that abounds in our world. But imagine what life would be like if we could all live like Jesus. Could you imagine what would happen to our world if every one of us lived like Jesus? If all our politicians, all our leaders, all Christians, what if we lived like Jesus each and every day? What would our world look like? Imagine what would happen to countries who spend billions and trillions of dollars on military if they were in, uh, to invest that money in people in the land of their enemies. What if people were to make peace instead of war? What if people stopped and listened instead of being indifferent? What if people were more like Jesus? And what if we serve one another like Jesus did? We're told when Pentecost took place that people were enabled by the Holy Spirit. It seems we can't, we can imagine what our world would be like if people did behave more like Jesus because his spirit now lives in us. Not only so, we can live up those holy imaginings because the Holy Spirit is enabling us. We do not live life with our own strength, but we live in the strength and the spirit and the filling of God's spirit. So the life we could not have imagined and the life we couldn't live, we can now live and imagine because the Holy Spirit is enabling us. Friends, being rescued uh, didn't mean those dogs lost their lives in these episodes I like to watch. Quite the contrary. Being rescued meant that the dogs' lives were upgraded they finally got to live the life that they always wanted to live. And, and the Pentecost doesn't mean when God fills our life that we disappear. It does not mean we become 
it, it, it means, though, however, that we become more alive than we could have ever imagined. We become awakened to the presence of God in our life like never before. We get to participate in Christ's gospel for the sake of others, and we experience a possibility of God like we have never imagined before. Friends, on this beautiful and wonderful day of Pentecost, may the Holy Spirit fill you all richly, and may God bless you and make you into a blessing. Happy Pentecost, everybody. Let us pray. Our gracious God, we thank you for your generosity. Lord, we thank you that you were willing to share yourself with us. And we're so grateful that through your Holy Spirit, you're with us even this day. And our prayer is this, Lord, as you have passed the baton to your church to carry on your presence and your ministry in this world, help us truly be a witness of Jesus Christ, to think deeply, to commune deeply with you, and to share deeply and generously with others what you have shared with us. May we truly live a life that is enabled by the powerful presence of your Holy Spirit, to your glory, to your power. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, friends, once again, uh, I want to thank you all of you for your just uh, generosity and your faithfulness. Uh, in Joseph, your church. sound is terrible. Uh, uh, maybe go back to what you had. Okay. Yeah, I thought maybe do that. Once again, thank you for your generosity and faithfulness and, um, and uh, just uh, your stewardship as well. And I do pray that God will continue to provide for all the needs of each and every one of us. But I also do pray for those of us uh, who uh, are also so moved that we do, in many ways, uh, start also thinking about people outside of our church walls as well. And I hope that God will give us a very bold and also generous spirit uh, to the needs of people outside in both finances, emotion, and time, and uh, be there for one another. So, friends. Uh, I want to invite you uh, to just our offering today. It says, in Pentecost, we celebrate the gift of the Spirit poured out on the church, preparing Christ's followers to serve him in the world. So let us also offer our gifts to God this day uh, to build up the church, its ministry, and mission uh, wherever the Spirit leads. Will you pray with me as we offer our offerings to the Lord? Spirit of grace and power, Bless the gifts we bring today so that they accomplish surprising things in Jesus' name. We offer ourselves, too, so that our lives may proclaim the good news with your grace and power. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, well, so friends, once again, thank you. Uh, it, it's so good to see you on, on, on the screen today. Uh, it's good to hear your voices. And uh, I know it's I look forward to this. Every time I see a new face logging up, I, it just automatically brings a smile to my face. And so uh, it, it's good to see all of you. I, I know uh, uh, we miss gathering uh, together. And uh, uh, I, I know uh, some of the folks I've talked to over the week, they said, uh, they can't wait till the church to start. And the first thing they want to do is come up and, you know, hug one another. Uh, I, I don't know how possible that is, but, you know, you, you just get the feeling that everybody misses one another. So uh, thank you Never so again. for um, just learning some new technology, changing behavior, and uh, getting onto Zoom, dialing in and joining in. We're so happy that you, you've done that. And um, also... Uh, somebody joined us actually our prayer meeting by phone this past Thursday and uh, and now people are joining us via phone uh, on worship service as well so uh, friends we're a congregation that congregates and if we don't congregate how can we be also a congregation right congregation exists when the congregation congregates and so if you can help uh, by uh, just explaining to some of the folks who don't have internet or don't use internet, uh, but that if they have a phone, they can just join in. Uh, it's not a long distance number. It's a local 647 number that they dial in and they just punch in the uh, meeting ID, press the pound key, and then they also punch in the password and uh, punch in the pound key and they're in. And uh, we have the ability to also change their number to their name so people don't have to keep asking 
who's behind that number? Uh, so Ben did that for Pat today, and so uh, we don't have to wonder, and so uh, uh, people will know that you are there. So if we can all just uh, help out doing that, that'd be great. Uh, I also know that some of the people uh, are e comfortable using emails, but beyond that, they're not so comfortable. So if you know of anybody who has devices or, you know, like uh, iPad or tablets or telephone, but uh, they just need help getting the software set up so that they could use Zoom, uh, myself or I think someone, any others, there's others who are, who can be available at church to assist with that. So if you know of anybody in that situation, Maybe they could drop it off at the church, like at a distance, just wait in the parking lot, and then we could pick it up, get it done, wipe it down, and then give it to them. So all they have to do is just press the link in the email, then they'll be able to join us. So uh, uh, if anybody needs that kind of help, um, uh, please uh, bring it to our attention. And also, uh, uh, over lastly, I just want to let you know that the prayer meeting uh, is, has resumed. And uh, people are able to just join in uh, via Google Zoom as well. So I sent out a mass email for the last two weeks inviting everybody, but because I don't want to bombard you with uh, emails every week, uh, for those of you who do want to join uh, that haven't joined the last two weeks, uh, just email me asking for the invitation. I'll send that out. And so from here on out, I'm only going to send it out to people who have attended the last two weeks and for the people who requested. And so uh, if you can just uh, uh, what is it? Uh, uh, keep that in mind. That'll be much appreciated. Friends, uh, will you join your hearts with me now as we uh, lift up our prayers to the Lord at this time? Holy Spirit, blow through us on this day of Pentecost and renew our faith. We ask that, Lord, you reawaken our love for God and your, let your flames warm our hearts with trust in Jesus Christ and dare us to great things in his name. Holy Spirit, blow through us and renew our faith. Wind of the Spirit, blow through us and give us energy to serve you in Christ's church. Open our eyes to recognize needs for ministry and mission and to learn from this time when we had to we have had to do things differently in worship and pastoral care. Open our hearts to connect with those for whom the time of social distancing has been very difficult. Open our hands to share in the tasks that need doing and open our lips in prayer and praise. Heavenly Father, we ask that your Holy Spirit will blow through us and renew our faith. Wind of the Spirit blow through us and give us understanding. For those whose lives seem so different from ours and those facing situations because of the pandemic that we didn't encounter, understanding for those with whom we disagree and for problems and challenges we will now face at home, at work, and in your world as we try to recover from the effects of coronavirus. Holy Spirit, blow through us and renew our faith. Wind of the Spirit, blow through us and bring healing. For all who face pain or illness, discouragement or disappointment, may so much keener because of isolation. Healing for all who know sorrow, sadness or grief, and for those who face stress and pressure as they try to rebuild their lives, bring healing to the earth, to places of upheaval and ecosystems at risk. Holy Spirit, blow through us and renew our faith. Wind of the Spirit, blow through us and bring us the compassion we see in Christ Jesus. Blow through us and refresh us as your faithful followers. Equipped to serve the world you love in his name. Heavenly Father, we ask now you would strengthen us. And even as we're strengthened by you, Lord, we ask that we would have the sensitivity and the strength to minister to those in need near us, whether it be a family member, whether it be a friend, whether it be a coworker, help us to be witnesses of Christ, the presence of Christ to them, as your Holy Spirit, Spirit enables us so that they may also get a glimpse of Christ's mercy, presence, and love for them. 
And the Lord, I'm sure all of us have also been very troubled by all the uh, people that we're seeing uh, to our neighbors uh, south of the border as well. Lord, we pray that as great as the pain is now, we also pray for healing uh, in the U.S., uh, that the police and the communities where the trust have been broken, that a time of renewal may happen. And we especially pray for your sons and daughters, that they would rise up in these situations in times such as this to be mediators, uh, Lord, to be the people that are needed, people that can be conduits of peace and love and unity for that nation as well. And help us, Lord, when we see trouble in other nations, not to gloat or not to become proud, but in humility, give us also the wisdom and the humility to make changes that, Lord, we may be also better citizens of this wonderful country of Canada as well. And now we pray together the words that our Lord Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
friends, receive now these words of benediction. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. Amen.